All right, that's not what I mean. All right. Hey, Facebook. Um, this has been on my heart for a while, and I believe God's been telling me to share my story, and I've been just kind of shying away and shying away and shying away. Uh, some people have heard bits and pieces of it, um, but I, I haven't told the whole entire thing. Um, I did type it out once just because I was just amazed at everything he had done, but this is my first time like sharing it live. Um, I was encouraged to do this also through a course that I'm in, which is called TOU, the One University, and I'll talk about that a little more later, but in that course, um, they encourage you to share your testimony and share your story. And so I decided to come on and share it this evening. Um, when I was first led to share it, um, the month October kept coming up. And I was thinking, well, you know, why October? Like, why should I wait to October? And then it dawned on me that October is the month where, um, oh, hey, Nikki, glad you're here, glad you joined. Um, October marks five years of me being five word free. And that's my whole story. Um, God met me at the lowest part of my life, the darkest part um, when I was dealing with fibroids. And so that's where he like disrupted my life and turned everything around for him. So um, I've been reluctant to share because I was like, oh, it's fibroids. Hey, Susie, good to see you. Um, and it's not like, you know, cancer or something like that, but God heals all. He, he, he heals. And he's not a respecter of persons. And so there's going to be a woman out there that needs to hear this story. And so I'm going to tell it. And I wanted to give God glory, of course. And if it can help someone else, then it will help somebody else as well. So I'm a little nervous. So I actually wrote some things down, some notes so that I wouldn't uh, forget because uh, it's it's gonna it's a it's a story. It, it takes a while to tell it, and I just didn't want to forget anything. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and share. You can share this video, um, of course. I, as more people hear, it, then more people will um, come to know God the way I know Him. So I start off with um, I grew up going to church. Uh, I grew up in a Baptist church, and we would go to church on Sundays, and of course we go you know on Easter and holidays and and all of that. Um, and so I grew up believing in God and believing in Christ, but it was kind of like he was way up here somewhere. Like he was up there and I'm down here and he's not really interested in all of our little details in our lives. Uh, well, let me tell you that he is. So I'm gonna turn on some of my notifications here. He's, he's interested in every single detail of your life, no matter how, um, how little you think it is. Um, so that's how I started off. I, so I grew up going to church when I was 18. I actually fully like accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior and I got baptized. Um, well, so this was like, I was a freshman in college when it happened. Um, and I was still going to church and doing all of that. So come around 2013, this, this was the year. Um, I had been having issues with my cycle. So if there's any guys on here, I'm gonna be talking about my menstrual cycle. So I'm just letting you know. Not, I'm not going into gory details, but this was the issue that I had. So I'm gonna be talking about that. So I had been having issues um, off and on. It would be really, really heavy. And then my cramps were getting worse and worse and worse. And so it was like about February, 2013, like I just kept getting this thing, this feeling that something wasn't right. And I needed to, I needed to go see a doctor. Um, and I had been lazy. I wasn't going to get my checkups every year. So that's another thing you want to do, ladies, get your checkups. I wasn't. So um, I found a doctor to go to. And I remember it was in February. Um, I left work early um, so I could go to my appointment. And I, I got checked out. And um, she determined that I had a large fibroid. And it was like 16 centimeters. So it was almost like I was 16 to 20 weeks pregnant, kind of like that's if that if it was a baby, that would have been the size. And I had gained weight all over um, because of the hormones. So the fibroids grew off of estrogen and progest and 
progesterone. I hope I say that right. And so I had gained weight, so I hadn't really noticed. And I always would get bloated during that time. So I just didn't really pay attention. But now I look back now and I was like, yeah, I should have noticed. But I was probably kind of like ignoring it because I didn't want to go see a doctor. Um, so I went there and I got diagnosed with the fibroid and I just, I just busted out in tears. Like I couldn't even drive home. Like I called my mom, like it makes me want to tear up when I think about it now. So I told myself I wouldn't cry, but I'm gonna try not to. Um, I called my mom and she talked to me in the car and she was like, don't try to drive, just sit here and get yourself together. Cause I was just like, I was just like bawling like a baby because at the time I was 34 and I wasn't in a relationship, but I've always wanted to have kids. And here I am, have, I have this huge tumor that could stop me from having kids. And I was just devastated. Um, and so my doctor, she had given me a name of another doctor to go see, but I wasn't, I wasn't hearing that. I, was, I wasn't ready for that, you know, having to go see a specialist and all of that. So I came home and I did the worst thing ever, which is get on the internet and look up everything about uterine fibroids and on WebMD and ev everywhere else. And it was just, it was, <laughs> that, that made it worse actually. Um, so what she did do is she put me on a birth control shot. I think it was Depro Provera. I hope I'm saying the names right. I should have wrote down the medicines, but she put me on that to try to lessen my cycle um, because that's what was, I kept having a heavy bleeding and, all of that. Um, but before I could even get on that, let me back up a little bit. From that first doctor's visit, that night, the nighttime nurse called me because they had done blood work. And the nighttime nurse called me and she was very concerned. And she was like, you need to go to the emergency room. And I was like, what do I need to go to the emergency room for? My red blood count was at four. And a normal red blood count, I believe, is between like 11 and 15 um, I don't think it's I don't think it's grams, but it's micro. I don't know. I should have looked it up so I could have to be more have to be more scientific. But I was well below what was normal. And she was like, "Are you dizzy? Like you should even be." She was like, "You shouldn't even be conscious like right now. Like I should have fainted or something." And I was like, "I'm fine." I was like, "I get tired easily, and my 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 heart beats. You know, if I go upstairs a lot, and I I just thought I was just getting out of shape." And so she was like, "No, you need to go to the emergency room." So this was after the, this was the same day of my first appointment. So I called my parents because the nurse said, don't drive. And yeah, it was, it was that low, Susie, it was low. Um, the nurse said, don't drive, call somebody, drive you to the emergency room. So I called my parents, of course. So they're all like nervous and scared. They drive me to the emergency room. I get there, they do, they take blood again because they wanted to be sure that it was that low. And so it was, and the emergency room doctor was like, he goes, I don't understand it. He's like, you should have fainted by now. Like, you're looking at me like, you know, and he goes, you don't feel dizzy. And I was like, I know. I said, no. I said, but if I would, I was telling them, you know, if I go upstairs or if I walk too fast, I would get really out of breath and my heart would beat really, really fast. And that's what it was. It was because my body was, was like almost in shock because the red blood count was so low. So they admitted me to the hospital and I had to have um, a blood transfusion. So I got two units of blood and they gave me an iron infusion as well because of course my iron was low because my blood was low, it was like a cycle, just kept going around. Um, so while I was in the hospital, my doctor, my OBGYN, that's when she came over and gave me the shot because her office is in the same hospital. I was in Seton Northwest. Um, so she came and gave me the birth control shot. She goes, this should lessen your cycle so your blood can kind of build back up because that's what was happening. And so it lowered over time. That's why, I guess that's why I didn't faint is she was kind of saying it got low a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, like each month it got lower and lower and it couldn't build back up. But it's not like I dropped from, you know, 11 all the way to four within, you know, a couple of weeks time or whatever. It was little by little. And so my body had kind of learned to like adjust, adjust. And so I was staying up, but I look back now and that was all God. He kept me because I was going to exercise classes and everything with a blood count that low. I shouldn't have been conscious, like been able to do anything. So that was February. Um, and I was looking up stuff on the internet and oh my God, y'all, there's people, there were people out there selling teas and 
oil packs and just all this different stuff for fibroids. It was just crazy. And I found out that like 70% of women suffer from fibroids at some point in their life. Some never have symptoms. They have them and they never know and they have kids and do everything and they never know about it. And then there's women that, for instance, for me, somehow mine grew really large and distorted my uterus and I, and I was having all these, all these issues. Um, amen, Nina, amen. And so uh, between February, so between February and March, I was getting the birth control shot to lessen my cycle. And I, I think the days overlapped or something, but the shot didn't really help because it started having, I started having breakthrough bleeding, which was like in between my cycle. And I just want to tell the story. So I apologize for the details, but I got to tell it. Um, and so in April of that same in April of the same year, 2013, I had an issue where I started bleeding at work and it was really heavy and it wouldn't stop. And I didn't have enough uh, sanitary items at work. So I had to come home to change my clothes and everything. And it was still this heavy bleeding. I mean, it scared me. Like I, I thought I was going to bleed to death in my bathroom and my parents were going to find me like that. Like that's, that's how it bad it was. And so, um, Yes, yes. I heard people say that about Depot. I'm like, never using that again, ever. <laughs> um, so I called my mom and I was like, it's heavy and it's not stopping. I don't know what to do. And, and I didn't want to drive myself because I felt like if I'm bleeding like that, I could faint in the car. So my mom was like, call 911. And so I called 911. I had to have an ambulance come to my house and take me to the hospital. I was I was terrified. They got there and they touched my heartbeat and they're like, your heart is racing. I'm like, because I'm scared. Like, I, I didn't know what was going on. And so they like, take me to the hospital. My parents meet me there at the hospital. They keep me in the hospital again. Um, I didn't need a blood transfusion this time, but uh, they just kept me to observe me uh, and observe my cycle. And eventually it tapered off. So basically I was just having a really bad, really extra heavy cycle. And the depot, the shot they had me on was... I'm making it and making me have more bleeding and stuff. So that wasn't good. Um, but while I was in the hospital, the doctor that admitted me said that she had fibroids, that she had 10 of them and had them removed. And she gave me the name of a doctor at Texas Fertility Center, which is Dr. Silverberg. So I'm going to say his name because if y'all are having problems, ladies, it's who you need to go see. Um, and she was like, you need to go see him. And just the thought of seeing another doctor scared me. So I was just like, okay. And I just kind of followed it away. So she admits me to the hospital. The next morning, I see a different physician to discharge me. Because she was like, okay, you know, it's, you know the bleeding's let up. We can let you go home. But you got to take off work for a week and you got to rest. So the discharge doctor gave me the same name. She was like, you need to go see Dr. Silverberg at Texas Fertility Center. So that's twice, right? And as far as I know, these two doctors don't know each other because I was admitted late that night and then I was discharged like the next day. And so um, I was like, okay, I just kind of filed it away in my head. I was just, I don't know what, I can't even tell you the state of mind I was in. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but after you're in the hospital, you have to go follow up with your, um, your regular physician. So I went back to my OBGYN and she had already told me about this doctor at Texas Chili Center. So then she tells me again, she goes, have you made an appointment yet? Like she got a little, she got a little attitude with me because I was like slowing around and she mentions the name again. And so that's when I was like, okay, I guess I need to make this appointment. So I still kind of slowed around. I was still online looking at, you know, foods to eat, which was good. I, I changed a lot in my diet and all of that and looking at foods to eat and vitamins to take. And I decided to pray about it. And I was like, God, do I, do I need to go see this doctor? And before I could even finish the prayer, it was like he spoke in my heart and was like, I've already told you what to do. So it was like, I've told you three times who to go see. You need to go. Like, quit. Do what I say. That, that was kind of like how I felt. Like I was being reprimanded a little bit. And, you know, there is a verse in Matthew um, 18, 16, where he's talking and he's telling his disciples that when they go to minister to somebody or they're going to um, actually they're going to uh, talk to somebody about sin in their life. And if the person doesn't believe you, they say, take two or three other witnesses with you so that it will be established by two or three witnesses. And so 
that revelation came to me later, but now I look back and I was like, that's what was happening. Like these, these three women doctors, as far as I know, didn't know each other at all. And they were all telling me to go see the same person. Um, so I was just nervous. I was scared to go see the surgeon because I was scared he was going to say hysterectomy and then I couldn't have kids. Right. But then I think he's a fertility specialist. So that's what they, they try not to do that. And so I was like, okay, let me just go and see what he says. So I go to the surgeon. Um, he's absolutely wonderful. So much patience explained everything to me. Didn't make me feel silly for not wanting to see a, see a doctor or anything didn't make me feel because I was thinking oh my god let this thing grow this much he's probably gonna never didn't make me feel like that at all it was just like this this happens and we, we're gonna fix it you know um so from him I had to go see a blood doctor as well because I was so anemic um that the shape of my red blood cells had like changed the changed shape they thought maybe I had some other kind of blood disorder so I had to go see a hematologist as well y'all this year was I'm telling you so for someone that don't even like going to see a doctor, I was seeing like three or four of them in a matter of, it was just crazy. So I had to see a hematologist who was absolutely wonderful. He was a much older guy, kind of like a grandfather type doctor. And he was just, it, it was, now I look at it now and I was like, God lined up the right doctors for me to go to. So God heals folks and he can heal through people. Just, I'm gonna finish my story, but I just don't, don't want you to think that you got to be healed by not going to the doctor. God calls people to different jobs and he calls them to their professions and he calls them to things. And these men, I guarantee you, were called to this. And I was, I, the God, God knew who to tell me to go to. Um, so I was, went to see the hematologist and he was just checking out my blood. I had to take iron and all of that. Um, the fertility specialist put me on a medicine that completely stopped my periods. And that scared me because I was like, I do want to have kids someday. Like, is it going to come back? And he was like, yes, it's going to come back. He goes, your hormones are stronger than you think. Like, it's going to come back instantly as soon as you stop this medicine. So I had to take that shot once a month. But it was able to stop the cycle so my blood could build back up and I could have surgery. Because that was the only way to get the fibroid out was to have uh, surgery to take the fibroid out. And so, of course, I was terrified of that. Um, so in the meantime... My mom told me, she said, get off of WebMD, get off the internet, get off Mayo Clinic, like .com or whatever. She said, stop looking at all this stuff. And she was like, don't give up on your faith. And so I'm, I am so grateful that I have a mom that, that spoke that into me because I was still online trying to look up stuff. And then I was like, no, I got a surgeon that's telling me what to do. They put me on the medicine. I need to just ride this out until I can have my, have my surgery. Um, while I was... Um, Hold on just a minute, y'all. So while I was on that medicine, this was kind of like, I guess it felt kind of like an intermission, right? Like I wasn't having these horrible, horrible cycles, but I still didn't feel that good because I could feel all this like pressure and bloatedness with the fibroid. Um, but I wasn't having that because the medicine was gone, but I had to let my blood build back up. So it was just kind of like this little waiting time. So in between that, I can't remember how I came across this book. I don't know if I was watching TV or if I saw it on, on the internet, I can't remember. But I got this book by Dodie Osteen. Um, and it's her testimony of how God healed her of cancer. And I was looking for anything that was about healing at that time. Um, and so I got this book and I started reading it and I kept thinking, now I know it was the enemy telling me this, but I just kept thinking it's a fibroid. It's not that serious. Like I don't, you know, but it was serious to me at the time. It is serious because it, it would stop life from happening um, if God chooses me to bring forth life. So I started reading her book and she has lots of verses in here that she stood on during her her time with cancer and her healing. And so I started, I got my Bible out and I started highlighting these verses and putting little tabs in there. So I tabbed up my whole Bible with stuff. Um, so I got all my tabs and stuff here. And what was even, what was more amazing though is how God spoke to me through these verses for the issue that I was having. There was a verse, uh, for example, I'll go to one that's in, 
uh, it's in the, it's in the Old Testament and it's in Exodus twenty five, and um, let's see if I can read it. So the verse that was in Miss Osteen's book, where she put uh, verse twenty five, says. So you shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of you. And something just led me to keep reading and like reading the next verse and the next one, verse, um, so I'm in Exodus 23, I just read 25, and then when I highlighted it, I read the next verse too, 26, and it says, no one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land, I will fulfill the number of your days. And I felt like, I felt like God was speaking that directly to me because that was the issue I was having. I was I was having this fertility issue. And there was other verses too where I would highlight from her book, but when I read the verse above or I read the verse below, it had to do with what I was dealing with. And I was just, I was blown away. I was like, I felt like God was talking directly to me and what my issue was. And so from that day on, I just, I stayed in the word. I definitely got off on the internet and didn't, wasn't looking at all this different fibroid stuff and everything on the internet. So that was kind of like that. That's what was going on in that intermission time between me starting that, I think it was the Lupron shot. Yes, Tilling, that's it. I think it was Lupron. Yeah. Yeah, I had some side effects too, because it puts you in like a fake menopause. I, I had, I had the night sweats and all that stuff that I'm not looking forward to when I get older, but I had that, but it, it helped me build my blood back up. So I was like, I gotta, I gotta do it so I can, I can get this done. Um, so in between that time and me having my surgery, so that was between April and I didn't have my surgery till October of the same year, 2013, I was reading Bible verses and just reading anything. And he led me, I can't even tell you how he led, God led me to some of these verses, but he led me to read about Rachel um, and to read about Hannah, because because both of them um, struggled having having kids, and they had seen other people around them have kids, and how they had to stay keep their faith, and they had to continue to pray and stay strong in God. And that's what was happening to me. I was I was working with women that were having kids, and I'm having this fibroid issue. And even my own niece at the time, my 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 own niece was pregnant with her first child. When I was going, through, we found out she was pregnant the same time I found out like I had the fiber issue. And so that that was tough for me to deal with. And I was thinking, OK, I'm going to be a great aunt before I'm going to be able to have my have be a mother or am I going to be able to have kids? So it was it was rough. What I can say is no one around me was taunting me or saying anything negative. It was just it was rough on me. Like I was internalizing and thinking that something was wrong with me and whatever. It was it was not a good time. Um, but I started reading those stories and I would, I would pray to Lord, pray to God and say, you know, you remembered Rachel, you remembered Hannah, you know, remember me. That's about all I could even pray. Like, I was just like, I didn't even know what to say, but we know the Holy Spirit can, when we don't know what to pray, the Holy Spirit can come and intercede and pray for us. So I know the Holy Spirit did a lot of that, uh, during this time for me. So it finally rolled around to October. And it was time for me to have my have have my surgery. Um, by this time, I wasn't even afraid. I was just ready to be done. I, I, I guess I was afraid, but it wasn't as much at the beginning. Um, I'm telling being in the word definitely took that fear away. And I wanted to just be done with everything and have my surgery and be done. So I go in and the doctor explains that I have to have two procedures. I have to have the first one is going to remove the fibroid, and then the second procedure would remove any scar tissue that grows. And because my fibroid was so big, it was 16 centimeters, he would, he expected, he was like, you're gonna have a lot of scar tissue. And this man had been doing surgeries for probably the number of years that I've been alive, or at least half the number of years I've been alive. So I trusted what he said, this is what he does. He helps women that have, you know, fibroids, endometriosis, any of those issues, um, that's what he does. So I was like, okay, we're gonna do it. So. I go in and I think it was October the 10th. I think it was October the 10th on 2013. I go in and I have, I have my surgery, um, the first surgery where I get the fibroid removed and the surgery went fine. I was able to go home. I was, I only missed two weeks of work. Um, and I was able to go 
get back to work and everything. And so that went, I didn't have any complications. So that was, that was a godsend right there. I didn't have any complications or anything. Um, and then I had to go back for the second surgery around December of the same year, 2013. Um, he usually I think it was like eight weeks or something like that. So I went for the second one and it was just going to be where they went in through my belly button. Like they weren't even going to make an incision. It was one of those non-evasive, but it was just to get the scar tissue because the scar tissue was what would impede fertility. What would make me have a hard time having kids later was the scar tissue. Um, so we went in for the second surgery. I came out of that one. I go to my post-op. Uh, that one was an easier recovery because there was no like really incision or anything. Um, but I go to my post-op and my doctor is in awe. And I mean, he leans across the table and like leans up at me and was like, God was with you. And I, had, I actually had to have him repeat it. I said, what did you say? And he was like, God was with you. He said, because the size of my fibroid, I should have had a lot of scar tissue. And he showed me on a picture because they took pictures of everything. And he showed me I had one little piece of scar tissue by one ovary. And that was it. Everything else was like, he says, it's like you are like new, like, like the fibro was never there. I mean, I have the scar, but on the inside, he was like, it's like it was never there. Like there's not the scar tissue. There is nothing. And I, I didn't even know what to say. I was stunned. I couldn't even cry. I couldn't do anything. I was just like, God did this for me. Like, I didn't even do anything. And, and, that, and that's who God is. Like, we don't have to work for anything. Like, his grace and love is for all of us and for everybody. And I was, I was just, I was stunned. I was just totally stunned. And so... The, the surgeon was stunned. I mean, he leaned up and told me that and he was like, you look great. He's like, your ovaries are great. Your fallopian tubes, like everything is just like, I mean, he was just like, I, I don't, I, I don't understand. You should have had scarring and all this and none of that is there. Um, and so I was, oh my gosh, I, I, right now I don't even have the words to like say, like, I don't even know how to like explain it except he healed me and God heals and he is still in the healing business. So do not give up press into him for whatever you are dealing with because he will see you through. Maybe not how you want to see through because I would have rather not have surgery. I would rather not have a scar, but that scar reminds me of what God did for me. So I'm not even that upset about the scar anymore. Um, that doesn't even really bother me because I know that's what he did. And so that's, um, that is, I don't know how to say, so it's changed my whole, my whole idea of God. Like he's not this, this far person up in the sky in the universe somewhere. No, no, no. Like he wants to deal with your life and he wants to be involved in every detail of your life. And we can go with him about everything. I mean, you're talking about, I was talking about my cycle on Facebook, right? Because that's what God's done for me. Like I would have never thought in a million years I'd be on here talking about that. Uh, but that's where he met me. That was one of the darkest times in my life. Because uh, it wasn't just health. I had financial issues. Um, the school I was at, the principal wanted me off the campus. I got put on the RIF list. Like all those things happened that year. And God restored all of it. Um, and so I just wanted to come on here and share that. Um, I don't want to be too long because there's other things that he led me to too and how he worked in my life. So I may come back and tell more of that. Um, Cause I know at the beginning, I talked about the course I'm in that's called TOU, which is called the one university. And it's about you becoming the one. And it's one of those lessons, uh, challenges in there that tells you to share your testimony, share your story. And so that's one of the reasons why I'm on here uh, sharing. And so I want to talk about how God led me to that. And that course is, has so much healing involved in that for everything and not healing of, you know, relationships and just healing yourself and things that you've gone through. And it's, it's wonderful. Uh, but that'll be a whole nother video. I don't even want to go um, into that on here tonight, but I do want to leave you. I do want to leave before I go. I do want to leave you with a verse from, let's see, it's from Psalm 37 and Psalm 37, 23. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And it says, the Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. And 
after I read that, I was like, that is so true. Like he was concerned with every little detail that was happening to me uh, during that time. And there were so many times I can't even remember. And I was trying to journal it and keep it all down. I didn't bring that journal with me right now, but there were so many times where I prayed about something or I was feeling um, anxiety about something or feeling depressed about something. And I'd get up and the verse that's on my Bible app is exactly what I needed to hear. Or I'd open my Bible and start reading the verses I'd highlighted. And then if I just skipped down a few verses, my eyes would just skip down and the verse right there is what I needed to hear. So he was constantly comforting me and constantly talking to me through his word, through his scriptures. And so I just wanted to come on there and share that with everyone. I hope it encouraged you. I hope it encouraged you because it definitely encouraged me and it has changed my whole uh, relationship with God. He's not just up there any, anymore. I talk to him daily. We, it's a relationship and that's what he wants. He wants relationship with us. We are his sons and daughters and that's what he wants. He doesn't want us to see him as this being that's way far away that we have to please. Um, he's going to take care of us. And so that's why I wanted to come in and share. I didn't want to be too long on your on your Sunday evening, but I wanted to share because I feel like um, it's going to help somebody. It's going to glorify God, most definitely. Um, and if anybody is in this situation, he will bring you through. Um, you just have to be open to how he's going to bring you through. Because I wouldn't have chosen surgery if I could have helped it, but that's how he brought me through and how he showed himself to me was through that situation. Um, so that is all I have for now. I'll put in the comments how I got um, her book, this book right here. Um, this is a powerful, powerful book of how God healed her of cancer. Um, but this is the book where I started with the, that's the verses that I stood on and I would read on here. And that uh, helped me. So I'll put on there how I did that. Um, thank you all for joining. Oh, hey, Nikki, you're welcome. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank you for being encouraged me because I was nervous. I hadn't really told the whole story to anybody before, but it had been on my heart. Like, you got to share, you got to share, you got to share. And so um, I have shared my story and I hope it was encouraging and I hope it blessed you. And you can ask me any questions if you know someone that's going through the same thing. Uh, feel free to have them reach out to me. If you want to know the doctor that I went to, I know I said his name already probably about five times in here, but if you want to know this information or where the Texas Fertility Center is, I can give you all that information as well because they were absolutely wonderful. They were wonderful. I could, those people were called to the job that they did because they're so personable and made, you, made me feel so like less scared. And I don't know, it was just the way they, I don't know, they were just so loving, as how could I say it over there? So it was wonderful as well. So I'm going to go ahead and get off. And um, I thank you for watching. I will say this, that there, is a, there will be a part two because I got to get into the hair part. Because from the anemia, I was so anemic that it damaged my hair. The iron deficiency had damaged my hair. And that's how, that's why I have my hair page and I want to help women who, who other women that have damaged hair um, get their hair back on track because I had to get my hair back on track uh, after that. So um, I will come back and do a part two on the hair part because that's that's part of that's wrinkled into the story too. And that's how I started doing that. So I thank you all for watching. Thank you so much. Please share and please reach out um, if you have any questions about if you have, do have dealing with fibroids or anything like that, I will be happy to listen to you. I'll be happy to pray with you. I'll be happy to um, give you verses to, to look at, uh, verses to read, actually, and put them in your heart if that's what you need. Uh, I will do that. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all later.